They had condoms in there. They did not show that at all on the show. Red light, green light. The first challenge on the show was ridiculously hard. I've run seven marathons and I think this was every bit as hard as a marathon. So my name is Jinu Oak and my player number is 030. My name is Kevin Byrne and I'm player 454 in Squid Game The Challenge. Honestly, shout out, huge shout out to my wife. Um, we were big fans of Squid Game and being Korean, we watched a lot of Korean shows and just like Squid Game did for us and the rest of the world, it blew our minds when we watched it, we binged the whole thing. Um, I'm a big time athlete, I play a lot of sports and on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Um, I play soccer every week. So I guess that's how dedicated, dedicated I am for sports. But um, Squid Game was the first time, because of Squid Game, I missed soccer for the first time in a while. And we binge, binge watched the whole thing. We were huge fans of the show. Um, and when Netflix announced that they were gonna do open casting for this reality show, my wife was the one that pushed me to apply. Um, and we were like, okay, let's just try it for the hell of it, see what happens, um, expecting nothing out of it really. So she filmed my video application of a minute um, for the initial screening. And we were just, honestly, we were just having fun with it, laughing. She was giving me pointers here and there thinking, if I'm the producer, I think I would like this. I don't think I would like this. So really, again, shout out to my wife. She was the reason I was on the show. Um, and I'm sure we'll cover it later, but huge shout out to her, especially because I had a three week old baby at the time of filming. Um, so she allowed me to go to London for a couple weeks and really drop everything at home. So yeah, my wife was the main reason uh, I was on the show. Yeah, I wanted to be on Squid Game The Challenge for the adventure, even if there wasn't money up for grabs. I mean, who's gonna who's gonna decline four point five six million dollars? But even if that wasn't at stake, I a hundred percent would have done this. It was uh, an opportunity to step into a show, like into the drama, um, and kind of experience it not just from your couch, thinking what you would have done in that situation, but really kind of give give it a try yourself, which was a, a unique experience. I'm of course not going to sign up for something where you're going to get shot, but um, it is, I think, kind of natural to think how would I handle that situation. Um, and so, I mean, I never thought it was going to be an option because it was just a drama at that point before they had announced the reality version of it. But once I saw that it was going to be converted into a reality show, I, I knew that that was something I wanted to try for. Yeah, I was super pumped. Um, when I went on set, obviously before throughout the whole um, application process, we had no idea what other contestants and what other players were going to make it. Um, so when everything filmed in the UK, they flew us in for a quarantine. And during that quarantine in the hotel, we were kind of able to see what other players there were. Um, they kept player interactions limited. So I had my guesses if someone was Asian, I was thinking, okay, maybe is that person Korean? Or are they not? But I was surprised at how few Koreans there were on the show. I think I was one of just six. Um, and one of just four uh, language speakers. So I was proud to definitely represent. Um, I will say I made it the furthest out of all the Koreans and it's not a spoiler at this point since uh, up to episodes nine have dropped, but um, I was super proud to be able to represent Korea um, and make it as far as I did. Yeah, watching the footage back now, everything seems like it goes so quickly. I mean, the first episode, for example, took four days, give or take, to film. So everything that's in real life was much longer. Of course, they edited it down to make it move and, and be interesting at a faster pace. So that's that's something that I'm kind of struck with looking back now that I'm, I'm not experiencing it real time. Also, one thing that's different is you don't get a sense of the par paranoia and conspiracy theories. When we were there in that dorm, high stakes, no information, and all you really had to do was talk to one another. There were so many conspiracy theories thinking that certain people were plants or like they have information, they know something, they got called for chores. What does that mean? And looking back, it's like, we were so paranoid. I mean, kind of rightfully so, but a lot of things that we were just making up in our heads. Yeah, it's felt awesome. Um, first five episodes, most of the ones that people have watched up to this point since episode six through nine just dropped like 12 hours ago now. Um, people have been DMing me, even though I had, didn't get much screen time in the first five episodes, um, I do get shown a couple of times. So I've gotten messages from like elementary school friends who I haven't talked to for years saying like, is that you? Um, people that I don't know that reach out, say, okay, like my, my, it's my mom's birthday. She's a fan of yours. Would you mind sending us a video and saying happy birthday? Um, I don't know how she's a fan of me if I'm only on the screen for like 20 seconds, <laughs> but, um, I was happy to do that and really just getting DMs from both people that I knew in the past and people that I didn't know has been exciting. 
so we shot the show back in January. So it's been 10 months to be kind of low key nervous or anxious about how, like personally, how I would come across um, in my kind of pivotal scene. I was nervous that I'd come across as like a, a complainer. I'm happy with the edit. I think it was fairly accurate in terms of what happened. I mean, of course it is what happened, but you know, they cut things out or they, they change it a bit, but um, yeah, I'm pleased. I'm kind of relieved that I didn't kind of make a fool of myself. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with how I was portrayed. Wait, could you describe a little bit what happened during your pivotal, pivotal scene? Yeah. So I won't, I, no spoilers yet, but uh, so the second game in uh so the second game in the challenge is dalgonas which are these sugar cookies that you need to extract a shape out of the the cookie either with a, a needle or you can lick it there's a lot of different strategies so what we didn't anticipate we're all walked into this room you have to line up in four different lines i'm second person in the first line turns out that the first group has to go and they need to make a decision about what cookie shape they're going to get for their entire line of 50 or so people. They did not reach a decision. They had two minutes to do that. So then I'm the next four uh, that has to go in and try to negotiate with the other three people to figure out what cookie we're each going to take. Yeah, I would say the hardest challenge was worship. Um, so I was on the boat that had Tayo, Claire 107, Figgy, I believe she was number 33. Um, her numbers and mine were pretty close. So like from day one, we were in the same tent and we we were talking a lot. Um, so I was on that team and our team ended up losing. And honestly, it was such a helpless feeling seeing my friends go, um, but me surviving onto the next round. So the rule of worship was you have the captain and the lieutenant, and then they're leading the team. They strategize everything where the boats are placed, who goes into which boat. And it, the minute you sink two ships of the opposition, then that team loses and their captain and lieutenant go down with them. Um, so my team actually lost, and we lost Tayo, Figgy, a bunch of other great people that I've met. Um, but I was in a two-person boat, and luckily my boat didn't sink. But it, we won, but honestly, it did not feel like a full win losing most of our team. So I, I would say that was the toughest because I felt totally not in control. Red light, green light, the first challenge on the show was ridiculously hard. I've run seven marathons, and I think this was every bit as hard as a marathon. The show... The edit in the final show looks like it was five minutes. It actually took seven plus hours to film because it took so long to review the footage and make eliminations. And it was intense. Being an athlete, I earlier mentioned that I felt really good about anything that required athleticism, speed, but red light, green light was the toughest thing I've ever done in my life mentally, um, probably physically too, given the conditions. And yeah, it, What's shown on air, the five minutes, definitely does not do justice to what we had to go through. Um, that day in London, it was negative five degrees Celsius. And to be fair, the event was in a hangar. So it was like a big building without temperature control. So it was pretty cold in there too. But um, super cold. We were in, this isn't the official tracksuit from Netflix. This one was custom made, but maybe a little thicker than this. And like the one layer I have underneath, and I had one more layer. So like two thin layers underneath the track jacket. Um, the sweatpants, but that was pretty much it. And in those temperatures for anywhere between seven to nine hours, um, I finished a little earlier. I think I was the third batch of group to finish. So I finished with about two minutes left to go and it took me about seven hours, but I heard the last group ended with um, about nine hours from beginning to end. So it was, it was crazy. Um, and it, the show definitely downplays that um, doesn't even mention the temperature, but towards the end, when people cross the finish line, you'll notice that people's nose are red. Like people have runny noses. So that game was wild. I wish that red light, green light, you had more of an indication of how long it took. Like they show a woman who she ended up in a squatting position and couldn't hold it and went out. And in the edit, it looks like she couldn't hold a squat for 20 seconds, but in actuality, she was probably holding that squat for 15 minutes. Uh, so it's like a totally different story. I understand the need for the the duration of time, um, but it was a long time. It was cold. Uh, it was no no drink, no bathroom breaks. So it was um, it was much more intense than what it looks like on TV. Because viewers would be like, "Why are these people complaining? What's so hard about this?" But it was a challenge. Yeah. Um, so going into the game, I really didn't know what to expect. And with it being a reality show, I thought, okay, there may be some drama, 
but I think the drama portion definitely caught me off guard. Um, so I earlier mentioned that I'm big time into sports, so I'm pretty athletic. I felt really good about any games that required athleticism um, and also just being strategic. And I play a lot of board games as well. So like Warship aired. And if I were to be the captain for that, I felt pretty good about my strategy there. Um, but the things that caught me off guard were the dorm eliminations and really needing to like make alliances, um, almost almost feeling like if you didn't make an alliance or you didn't make good friendships in there that you were at a disadvantage. Um, so that's definitely what caught me off guard, just the whole drama, eliminations, and really the full immersive experience, being, being disconnected from your phone and really everything um, outside of what was going on in that room for a couple weeks. Like I've never experienced that in my life. So that was um, eye-opening for sure, just how much more you're engaged in conversations and in talking with people um, without your phone. So it was definitely eye-opening, but also the drama uh, caught me off guard. I think the most unexpected part would be coming out with all the friendships that I did. They, the casting team did an amazing job casting people, 456 people from all over the world. And everyone like without fail was interesting. Some people weren't really my like cup of tea uh, in terms of like, there were a lot of big personalities there, but everyone was interesting. So just so much downtime, you really had a chance to talk with the other competitors, get to know them. And I was exposed to people that I wouldn't have otherwise, you know, just different, all sorts of different walks of life. They had condoms in there. They did not show that <laughs> at all on the show, um, but they had condoms in there. And later people used it for chapstick because we didn't have chapstick. Like these were the struggles in the game. First few days, we did not have chapstick. Our lips were so dry. It was really rough. Um, funny story, kind of a secret, but my tracksuit, like towards the bottom section had a hole. So I actually snuck in uh, Blistax. I was using that. So a couple other females, like Figgy and Megan, they were like, how do your lips look so great? And I would have to downplay it and act like I didn't have chapstick because, you know, that's like my advantage and I didn't really want to share chapstick. So I was like, oh, like naturally, I just, just don't get chap lips. But um, yeah, now I can say I snuck in chapstick um, at the risk of being eliminated. But I was glad I did because people were getting desperate. They were using oil from the bottom of our like the egg portion of our food to use that as chapstick. Other people were using the condom lubricant as chapstick. So it was, it was gross, but I brought up the condom because I was thinking about using that as the final layer of the underwear ball too, but I didn't really want a slimy, slimy soccer ball. So people complained about the food, but I guess I learned that I have really low standards because while it was not enough, like we all lost weight, the food was not that bad, like sticky oatmeal and like bad rice with an egg on top. I was like, this is fine. I can deal with this. Yeah, the underwear ball is my proud creation. Um, it's shown briefly, and I think this is part of why maybe I wasn't included a bunch in episodes one through five is because I probably gave the editors and producers uh, hell when they were editing this um, because I think what was wanted was probably a lot more like the deep conversations, maybe the drama per se, um, but with people in the background throwing an underwear ball and just laughing and having fun, I'm sure I made editing the whole show um, really difficult. I'm sure there were clips where they were like, okay, this is really good. But then in the back, there's like a guy, a Korean guy with an underwear ball was like kicking it around laughing. So apologies, Netflix. Sorry, did not mean to do it that way. <laughs> but I did make an underwear ball. I was so bored in there because I usually play sports um, five out of the seven days in the week. So I'm usually regularly playing tennis, basketball, or soccer. And when I was in there for a, for a couple of weeks, I was going crazy um, because my body was just so used to going and exercising um so regularly so i couldn't take it after like a day or two in the dorms so in the bathrooms they had um underwear socks really everything since it was fully immersive and um, i got the idea okay let's try making a ball and with the materials i had what ended up being utilized were like four wads of underwear um girls hair hair ties to keep everything kind of condensed and tight and then last but not least socks there were some like large to x large socks that I don't think would have fit an elephant like they were huge um so i used those knowing that i don't think any players really use them much and they also had razor blades for us to shave so i cut like the foot portion of the sock out so just from the ankle to the calf and then i would use that as the final layer in the underwear ball make that really perfected it throughout time as i was in the dorms for a while um, so the first underwear ball is very flimsy you kick it and it kind of breaks and then towards the end underwear ball is solid it's like a legit size four soccer ball super tight doesn't break um, but yeah i was probably proud to make that i brought people together we played some juggling games for soccer 
threw it around like a football. Um, and there was one moment there that a lot of other players were sad that didn't make the show because the second night um, we played volleyball. So I made the under a ball. I said, okay, like we had the juggling game with six, seven people. That was great. What can we do to include more people? And the answer was volleyball. So what we did was we took these track jackets, everyone took them off that were playing and we tied it from one end of the dorm to the other to make a net. And it was like 40 v 40 at that time um, in the middle. So about 80 people were playing. A bunch of people were at the sides um, sitting at the top, just watching. So it was almost like a sports arena, people looking down and like cheering. We played for about maybe like five minutes and the production um, chimed in through the intercoms. They said, okay, heads up guys, if you guys sweat, um, that's on you. We're not gonna provide additional track suits. So do as you please. And after hearing that, I like had the ball in my hand. I was like, okay. And then we just kept playing and everyone else kind of went with it and we were having fun. And then like three minutes later, production chimed in again and said, please stop playing. So I think it was clear they didn't want us to play. And like the first attempt, they probably um, expected us to stop after knowing that we're not getting additional tracksuits. But that was a really cool moment in there. Um, I know a lot of other people really enjoyed that too. So again, sad that didn't make the cut, but under a ball, I was proud to make it. And I was proud that it brought people together the way it did. I think I would share my story a bit more. Um, towards the end, there are eliminations where you kind of have to choose people it, within the dorm. So it's like kind of a voting thing and you pick the next person to live and that person chooses the next person and so on. Um, I My whole strategy was just let's lay low um, and let's not really give people a reason to eliminate me. So I don't know if I did the best job with that because I made a big underwear ball that we ended up playing with a bunch in the middle of the dorm. Um, so that does get shown a little bit every now and then. But So I don't know if that helped me lay low much, but um, I feel like I didn't share my story enough with the people I did connect with. Um, really, I think I opened up to just one person fully. That, that was uh, the other Korean guy, Chaz, player 187. Um, but we had a conversation. And honestly, Squid Game the Challenge, it was a really dark time in my life when filming happened. Um, my mom had been battling cancer for nine years. Um, she, at that point she had been battling stage four. So metastatic breast cancer, triple negative for about five years. Um, so she, she really survived, um, through all the odds. I think the survival rate for five years is like 20% at that point with the condition that she had. Um, but we knew we were nearing the end. Um, doctors told us we had a couple months left and, when I went to the show, my mom, um, I was thinking about not going because given my mom's condition, but she really wanted me to go. Um, and she, since doctors told us we had a few months, we felt okay. Um, so I went and yeah, I guess this is the story that no one knows now at this point, but um, my mom passed away the day I got back from Squid Game actually. So it was, it was really rough. Um, honestly, it was, yeah, like even to this day, I'm still in shock the way it went down. Um, but that's why I was there. I was there to really fight for my mom. Um, had I won the prize money, I would have used it to get her in more clinical trials to try to prolong her life because at that point she had gone through so many different chemotherapies, we didn't have many options left. Um, but really that story, I only opened up to one other player that was in there. Um, and when people were chosen in that elimination game, I felt like a lot of it came down to, oh, this person had a really good story. I really wanted to give them a chance to continue on. Um, so I think if I were to change anything, I would change that. Yeah, when I got out of the game, since it was fully immersive, um, I find I found out that my entire, almost the entirety of the time I was there, my mom was admitted to the ICU, dangerously low levels of um, her blood count. And my sister took medical leave, um, urgent leave, dropped everything, came to Chicago to be with my mom. Um, and she was going to reach out to the Squid Game, Squid Game welfare team multiple times to just tell me to come home. Um, but my mom didn't let her till the end. Um, she said, okay, like doctors still say we have a few weeks left. Um, I don't want you to call him. So because of what my mom said, my sister didn't call me. When I got out um, and I connected with them, I FaceTimed and it was really just heartbreaking to see how much weight my mom lost um, in, in the short time I was there. And yeah, I came back and really that day was a um, day that I never want to live again. Even though I kick myself and say, okay, if I did this different, I probably would have uh, lasted a bit longer in the game and so on. Um, I, I'm sure everything happens for a reason. Um, even the fact that her passing away the day I got back was so shitty. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure if I made it past that, it would have been different too. So yeah, um, I'm honestly in that aspect, glad that I got eliminated when I did. Um, but yeah, my mom was a warrior. She was awesome. All of my positive traits came from her. So, uh, really just miss her and yeah, it, it sucks. I think what differentiated myself and how I was able to get on was I actually performed a squid game rap in my final round interview. So the application process was very tedious. It was, it spanned across a few months. Um, from the initial phones, the initial one was a video that we submit. Um, and I, I've heard a lot of different numbers. I think some of the production team told us like just south of a million people applied. Um, some articles said 100,000. So really, I have no idea what the actual number was. But all I know is 456 was still really hard to get into. Um, and I think what differentiated me was, one, I was Korean, so I had that going for me. Um, two, I was a, I'm a fluent native English speaker, and I think that was one of the prerequisites. So I think that's why a lot of the Koreans that applied from Korea didn't make the cut. Um, but three, I knew I had to differentiate myself. So I made a custom Squid Game rap, included both English and Korean in there. It was like 25, 30 seconds, but shouted out um, director Huang, because I, from my understanding, he may have been in the process of um, choosing the players. So I did that, and I think that's what got me on the show. So I did this also at um, at the actual Squid Game, but I'm happy to do it right now. Um, yes, so please. All right. Hey, Netflix fans, my Korean fans, player 030 right here. Um, Gina Oak, thank you all for your support. And Squid Game, reality show, and all the other contestants. This shit was real. I love you guys. Let's go. Yo, it's a squid game, this ain't no kid's game Got a chance and I'ma make it count, Gina woke, yo Learn my name, fam, gotta eat, I put the food on the table All I do is win, give me the O3, yo, label Gio not a hanin, inside DM Big stock, I dig it, we a Gio, I'm about a Gine Rap my home city, Chi-Town Y'all know if I go on the show, I'ma get it, woo! Hey, shout out player 003-021-053-004-002 083-090, way too many to shout out, I love you guys Let's go!